So, Andrew, thank you for coming on to this live with me. Um, uh, first live ever, right? First live ever, correct. Uh, so, what we're going to be talking about tonight, and uh, we're going to share some screens and show you some stuff, is first off what I call the seven steps of social selling. In other words, the most effective way to get a conversation with a prospect. And then we're going to look at, okay, how the hell do you organize yourself to be able to do this? Because, uh, well, because it's not as simple as you might think. So let me just start with, uh, I'll share my screen, uh, squeeze us, Andrew, into one corner. And we'll we'll go through this. So we're talking all things seven steps of social selling tonight, which is basically a simplified way to understand that everybody is on a journey. So it's not the case that, you know, you can just message people. I think I was talking about this a few minutes ago, Andrew. Um, it, six, seven years ago, you could literally just send any old message to anybody on LinkedIn and you'd get replies. But now it's actually really tricky and you have to do a really good job of developing a relationship to get somebody to respond to you. And that's a real tricky thing. I don't know, Andrew, you, you've been on LinkedIn a little while. It's quite tough to get conversations with complete like people cold, right? Yeah, it's. Um, I think it's definitely hard, um, and it feels like it's got hard in the past couple of years in particular. I found it much easier, not 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 vastly easier, but certainly in the last couple of years, it's um, it's very difficult just to go from nothing into a, an actual meaningful conversation. It's uh, it's certainly been a, di a change in time. Yeah, and so it has got more complicated, and especially especially you know especially since we're all bombarded with everything, email, phone calls, LinkedIn, it's everywhere, right? We're, we're swamped. Mm -hmm. So the seven steps of social selling is based on a couple of principles. Now, these principles are basically quite old school, really, is somebody would need to consume about 47 minutes of content to basically become a lead. Some would argue it's a lot more than that now. Um, but then there's also... Some people will need to see you seven times to remember you and to remember what you sell. So in other words, for, for a complete stranger to remember you, they probably have to see you seven times just to go. I think that's Dean, that guy who talks about social selling seven times. Yeah. Think about the radio jingles you grew up with as a kid. And how many times did you hear them before they got stuck in your head and you remembered them? Uh, and then when we're talking about prospecting, on, on average, there's again a debate on this, but uh, on average, people say it's about eight touch points, eight times of trying to initiate a conversation or do something towards a prospect to actually get to a point where you can get a meeting or a conversation or a Zoom booked in the diary with them. So that's the reality of what we're operating in. And then. Um, I, I don't want to kind of bang it to, you know, uh, drag this out too long, but because uh, I want to show you how you organize and systemize this so that it becomes successful. Um, but LinkedIn is designed. Just remember, uh, if anybody from LinkedIn watching this, we do love you. So don't take offense. Um, I'll be disappeared tomorrow. Dean Seddon will no longer exist on LinkedIn after this. Just be aware, be mindful, right? If you go onto LinkedIn without a plan, LinkedIn will plan to do something for you. So in other words, when, when you load up LinkedIn, LinkedIn's first thought as an algorithm, as a platform is, how do we get you to stay on the platform? And so LinkedIn will have experts, customer experience, UX people, all sorts of people studying behavior to get you to spend a lot of time on the platform and feel awesome doing it, whether or not you get any results from the platform. In other words, what I'm saying is, if you log on without a plan, you will waste a ton of time. And I've seen this time and again that people do this, right? So in other words, before you step foot on LinkedIn, you need a plan of what you're going to do. And this is why I wrote about the seven steps of social selling, because 
so many people have the best of intentions to go on the platform, do all this stuff, get loads of clients, loads of results. And then when they get there, they end up spending hours writing a post or they end up tinkering with stuff on their profile or they start really well and then forget who they've been prospecting or they start prospecting perfectly and then decide to check out the platform for two, three weeks and all that progress is gone back to square one. Atypical. I see this over and over and over again. So you have to have a plan and the plan is not this, right? So I call it don't try and beat the batting average. In other words, uh, if you look at those that dotted line there, right, from a connection request to a conversation, right? Now, quick tip, by the way, I'll just say this now, and hopefully LinkedIn isn't listening, right? LinkedIn will say to you, buy Sales Navigator, buy Premium, you get in-mails. And everywhere you see in-mails, they'll tell you about this 45% open rate. Notice you will never find a reply rate or a response rate anywhere, right? Whether that's a deliberate, whether that's because they don't have the data, I would think they do have the data. Um, but uh, my experience has been in mails have not been very good. So we want to be connected with our prospects. So down here, uh, let me get my pointer on the screen here somewhere. There we go. Over here, we want to be connected with people, right? And we want to get to a conversation. Now, what atypically happens on most social media, to be honest, is people try and get to that conversation as fast as they possibly can. Right. And there's nothing wrong with trying to get to conversations fast. But if you try to get com to conversations fast at the expense of success, that's a problem. So what you'll find is prospects do it, uh, salespeople and people going, I'll connect with people. And because they've connected with me, they obviously want to do business with me. So let's try and cut to the chase to get to that conversation. Doesn't work. Really doesn't work. Right. Now, if you're selling to everybody, you know, you're selling to everybody in the marketplace, everybody who breathes, basically, you can do this because you'll have an inexhaustible supply of customers. You know, if you can sell to every person who breathes, there's a million people potentially in your market uh, and you're selling 500 quid or less things. Knock yourself out. Just go for the machine gun. But if you're not doing that, if you're selling something that's high value, if you're selling something that's a considered purchase, if you're selling something that maybe has complexity to it, this is the reality of what you're going to have to do. Yeah. Now, I'll break this down a little bit more in a second, but the big thing we're going to talk about in the kind of next few minutes is how do you organize that? How do you plan that? What does the day to day look like? Because it's quite difficult if you don't have a plan. It's just chaos. So we've got to get connected and then we've got to go through what I call the connection phase. And by that, I mean OK, I've got to build some rapport. So it's not just, oh, I've amassed connections. I actually want to connect with them as a person. They get to know my name. They know who I am. They're vaguely familiar with. That's that Dean guy who who does that social selling stuff. Yeah, that's that Andrew guy who built the CRM. They want to be able to be familiar with it because familiarity will increase the response rates increase response rates now most people don't realize this and literally like half an hour ago i was talking about this with somebody else on an audio event about how doing things to engage a prospect will actually improve the way they respond to you and you get more responses but we don't stop there because one of the things that happens next is people burn connections because they don't find any interest level so there's a curiosity phase of finding out their interest, doing some research, seeing how your product might or service might fit and actually finding their level of interest. And there's a few different tools on LinkedIn you can do that with. And we're going to look at those. And then finally, you've got the actual conversation. Now, I know somebody will watch this video, maybe live or maybe on repeat, and they'll go, I don't have time for that. 
I don't have time for that. I, well, let me just throw something at you. You don't have time to nurture your prospects so you get three times more, more successful conversations. I would argue this, this will consume more of your time or in the long run because you'll constantly, for every one you get, you might have to burn through 200. For every one, for every, every one you get here, it might be 20. So in other words, you're going to get higher conversions while reaching out to less people. So to get the same result, you'll 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 prospect less people because it's a more successful outcome. But we're so excited. We want the sale. We want the deal that we bypass all of this. Our good sense, our common sense. We know that this is true. We know that you can't just go from connection to pitch and get success. But something in our brain tricks us into doing it over and over and over again, knowing full well it doesn't work. Because there's always that one chance, that fluke deal that might come. And this process is more like this top one here is more like playing the lottery. <laughs> it really is. It's like if I do it enough times, I might win. And this one is if I do the right things, I will win. So this one's like playing playing the odds and this one is literally doing the right stuff that you know equals a result and the thing is if you're running a cycle like this both regimented yeah don't, just because it's social media doesn't mean it shouldn't be regimented planned out meticulously actioned slots in your diary the works just because it's social doesn't mean you shouldn't be organized you shouldn't have a plan so this is how it works. And, and when you have a plan, things get quicker. And remember what I said, right? If you don't have a plan, LinkedIn will help you waste your time because that's their business model. They sell your eyeballs. They are incentivized. The platform is incentivized to encourage you to keep yourself on the platform. So let's look at the practicalities of this. Yeah. What do the practicalities of this look like? So. This is this is the kind of layout of what the seven steps look like. And I gave you a little kind of flavor of it there. Number one, you've got to find your leads, right? And find them. So, you know, you've got tools like premium that will help you find people. You've got sales navigator that can help you find them. You've got all the tools. And that's for another live to talk about how to find the prospects. In fact, I'm doing one tomorrow on how to find hot prospects. But then you've got to get them connected, right? 25% of people will connect with complete strangers, but the 75% won't. So you need a little plan of how are you going to engage people and interact with people so that you get the highest possible connection acceptance rate. And I've got a free guide. You can message me or Andrew. We've got a free guide on how to do that. And maybe I'll give it away uh, a little bit later. I'll put the link uh, in the chat or something. Maybe I'll do that. Um, but that's the first stage. You've got to grow your network and get those people connected. Because remember, in mails, there's no published response rate. What my experience has told me, it's really low. Right. Now, we'll talk about this tracking in a minute because it leads me to grill Andrew and show you some stuff about how to track your leads so you can take them through this process. Um, then you've got to do the familiarity phase. In other words, get them to know your name because that increases the response rate. Then you've got to create, find their interests, create the curiosity to find their interests. So in other words, let's say we're prospecting 100 people at the moment. Maybe only 15 or 20 or 30 of those are actually the right fit for us where we are. We don't want to burn leads who maybe are not in the right place right now. We just want to get the people who are interested right now. And there are tools and methods to do that. Then we got to start the conversations. And then we got to, you know, get them onto a call, get that call booked, get them to show up and do all of the stuff on the other side. And so this is a whole organized plan that you have to have. It's a workflow. It's not, it's not just an activity sheet. It's a workflow. And so coming back to that tracking of leads, this bit here, right, 
this is actually, if you don't have this system in place at the beginning, all of this will go to crap, <laughs> basically. Because, let's be honest, if you're trying to prospect from memory, you're screwed. If you're trying to prospect without knowing when you last did the last action and when the next action is due, you're screwed. Because you're basically you're basically putting it in the hands of your own memory. And uh, one of the things we found is, particularly on LinkedIn, I could have a really good chit chat with Andrew today as I've connected with Andrew. We could have a little bit of banter back and forth in the messages. And of course, I want to sell to Andrew. I want to sell to him right now. But if I do that, he'll go, oh, that whole banter was just cynical attempt to sell to me. You weren't showing any interest in me. So we want to create this cadence of activity so that you're building on top of things and not just kind of cynically doing the connect, chat and twist. Yeah. In other words, I'll connect with you. I'll show in. I'll have a bit of banter, a bit of rapport. And then I'll try and twist it round into my agenda. People can see that coming. So we want to pace this activity out. Could you imagine if you tried to do all of this to a prospect in a day? I bet you any money you'd have a, an injunction on you before the end of the week. Literally, you'd be banned from talking to them ever again. They'd either think you want to date them or you're some kind of weird psychotic person. Right. So we've got to sp spread this activity out. And, and it's a crude example, but slowly turn up the temperature. So this is a cold prospect. How can I disarm them and make them see that I'm not just a spammy salesperson? How can I build that trust and get them to know me? How can I find the people who are the most relevant and interested in potentially the solutions I've got to the problems they might have? Then how do I take that to a conversation? So this is the journey, the seven steps of somebody's social selling. And the fundamental bit to it is tracking. So that I do the right actions at the right time. I'm, I'm on track and I know where I'm going. And what I wanted to do today is give you a, a way of thinking about how to plan it. Because most people will go to spreadsheets. So that's the number one. They'll do this in a spreadsheet. And we used a spreadsheet tool for a long time. Or you have a clunky CRM that, let's be honest, isn't designed for quick, nimble actions. Like, for an example, it, if part of your connection strategy and your familiarity building is actually to go and engage on their posts or it is to maybe have a bit of banter in the messages or, so, you know, uh, rapport building in the messages. Right. Do you really want to spend 30 or 40 minutes recording that all of that stuff in the CRM? The weird bit is some CRMs, it takes more time to do the admin than it does to do the work. Yeah. So I wanted to show you, like, I'm happy to share these slides with you, but I want to talk more about the organization of this because actually that's where most people go wrong. So what I thought I'd do is Andrew's Andrew's been, Andrew built a number of CRMs, but he's been using my seven step system for himself. He learned, to, he, we came to my events, looked at how I did it and thought that was really cool and actually built it into a tool. So we're going to show you how the organization of this works. And Andrew, I'm going to stop sharing. And if you can share, that'd be great. Yeah, fine. I'll share my screen exactly the same. Um... So Andrew, Andrew's built CRMs for all sorts of people. But he built this one based off most CRMs are too heavy duty. I'm hoping you can see my screen, Dean. Yeah, we can see it perfectly. Smashing. Uh, that introduction there was um, really precise. Um, I found myself nodding along in several places because I'm not immune to the story that you told there. Um, all the things that you mentioned there in terms of selling from memory, I've done all of those. So I've built CRMs of all sizes and I sold them. I sell them as big bespoke systems in the past and I've sold them based on memory. Um, all the things that you mentioned there in terms of trying to do that shortcut to get round. Um, to beat the odds, I've done that as well. Um, and I'm not saying it was the system that caused me to do that, but there's certainly there's tools out there. There's, there's a whole myriad of CRMs on the shelf that you can go and find. Um, 
none of them I found are actually structured well enough to do what I needed to do. What I needed to do was move myself down that seven step process that you just described, Dean. The system, the tools out there don't allow me to do that. Yeah, they've got 90, 95 features around the edges that do all this and do all that and justify the price tagging, but I'm not interested in all that. I've got the start of a process, A, and I need to move from A to B to C to D to get that meeting at the end. And what I realised was, I thought to myself, hang on, I looked around and thought, if I'm struggling to do this and I do this for a job, why don't I try and consider something that's really streamlined? And why don't I try and consider a tool that I would like to use that's really light and that will actually allow me to do that rather than bogging me down in lots of different things around the edges, that actually that tool will become the core of what I do. So that's how Goggle CRM was, was born. Um, as Dean says, I went to a session, I saw these very seven steps. Um, I found myself in those in that in that session realizing that I was I was selling wrong, and I now use Goggle CRM to facilitate my process. So I eat my own dog food, as it were. I uh, I sit in my own puddle, as it were. Whatever it is, I, I I follow this. And Goggle CRM is probably the lightest CRM system that you will find. Um, and by I'm not just saying that. Mean, there's not. It's not overly complex. It's quick. It's simple. It, yeah, it's everything that just facilitates the process of what you need to do and nothing else. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's a load of jazz out there that you can go and add on to things that will justify price tagging and stacking up lots of things because that's what think people think that more is better nowadays. Actually, I found when I was selling, I'm sure like you do as well, Dean, that less, I, if I just take out the clutter and just present myself with the three things that I need, I can just sell. I can move people from the start of the journey to the end of the journey. Goggle is that tool that I built. Um, it's really simple, really light. Principally, it works on the same steps that we just talked about there. I, I start with Goggle by, let's say I've got my contacts in a spreadsheet. I've got them in LinkedIn. I've got them somewhere else. I can import my contacts into Goggle CRM really, really quickly. Um, I can import them straight via a CSV file. There's instructions now to get them out of LinkedIn, how to get them on an existing file. There's nothing wrong with starting in an Excel spreadsheet. We've all started with our with our lead tracking, our opportunity tracking in a spreadsheet. That's fine. What we're looking at here is the next step. We're nudging it into something that's a little bit more purpose built for that without the headache. I've luckily got all my contacts already into Goggle CRM so that I can demo them to you just now. Um, in here, I've got all my LinkedIn contacts, 2,100 contacts all from LinkedIn. Yours would import in exactly the same way, or from your spreadsheet, they would import as well. The critical thing that this um, this whole process allows is that what I'm looking to do is go from contacts into leads into opportunities. That's my process that I'm looking to step through by way of those seven so, steps. So contacts are just basically people. Contacts are everybody. So I, I imported everybody from my LinkedIn just because yeah. I talked to various people on LinkedIn I just need everybody in one place because some people previously were on spreadsheets, some were still in my LinkedIn uh, inbox, and I can't correlate them all in one place. I just need them together. So contacts are everybody that I could potentially interact with and maybe sell to or maybe not. Mm -hmm. um, and then leads are the people where, like, you're working on them, shall we say. Active yeah, so I'd, I'd be taking them right. through those steps that you just mentioned there. You know, I might be engaging with them a small, a, a little bit. I might be looking at their posts. I might be, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on them basically because this is somebody that I think I've identified, maybe in sales nav, uh, whatever. However, I found them. I think, you know what? Actually, yeah, they're they're, a, they're potentially a good fit for me. I'm not sure. I'm going to work. I'm going to nurture them. I'm going to put them through the seven steps here. So yeah. they're my leads in the middle tab yeah. here. And then opportunities. What, are, what what how would you define them? They're the people that I've I've warmed up basically. We've had a conversation. There's a likelihood that I'm gonna be able to take this further with them. And as well as marking them as opportunity mentally and in the system, I'm probably gonna put a value against them at that point there. Because the lead might not come to anything. A lead a lead might I might talk to Dean today and it might just be a casual chat and it might turn out that Dean's got no interest in what I'm doing. That's great. But he's going to disappear there. He's not going to be a lead anymore. He's not going to be an opportunity. Opportunities, on the other hand, I've spoke to Dean and we've had a good conversation. I found out what he's struggling with and I've realised that I can help with that. And let's say there's a package that I can sell to Dean. He's now an opportunity because I can progress him through my process of saying, listen, this is what I can do. This is how much it would be. Shall I have a chat about that? That's my opportunities. They're more in-depth than leads. And ultimately, my contacts will be a larger number. My leads will be a smaller number because it's a section of my contacts. 
And my opportunity is probably a smaller number again, but we're filtering people down through like um, a pipe, if you like, or a, or a seven steps there. Uh, and that's how they're laid out. Contacts into leads, into opportunities. <laughs> so how do you make somebody a lead? So here's all my list of contacts. Uh, I'm just going to pick two at random. So what I want to do is make somebody a lead really quick. I've been talking to Aaron here. Uh, I'm going to go into Aaron's profile. Um, what I can do with Aaron straight away is I've got all these tabs at the top that I can go through and do all sorts of things. But really quickly, I want to mark him as a lead. All I do is just click on lead. If I do nothing else today for Aaron, I can just come back out and forget that I've done that and I've now got a lead. That's all I need to do to mark Aaron as a lead. I can go all through my contacts here. Let's say I'm talking to Abby. I can mark Abby as a lead. And let's just have a look at somebody else. Let's just pick somebody a little bit further down the list. I can mark Zoe as a lead. So I've got three leads there that I've been working on. Yeah. So crucially, here's all my contacts. Three people I've been chatting to on LinkedIn, having a little early conversation with. And I want to distinguish those guys because I don't want to forget them. I need to work on them a little bit more. As soon as I do that in Goggle, without me doing anything else, no laborious process, you'll see the middle tab here when I log in. This is what I see when I log in. This is my poke in the eye. These three here that I click on are leads. Yeah. So I filtered out 2,000 people there in my contacts into three that are important to me, Aaron, Abby and Zoe. And they're and my you, leads that I'm going to work on. You would hope most people in their connections would have a few more than three, though, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And this, this, I think this will always be a smaller number. It'll be, a, it'll be a larger number than your opportunities because these are speculative. You know, it could yeah. go somewhere. It could not go somewhere. That's fine. You're just working through those seven steps. Yeah. But ultimately, you could have as many as you like in here. Uh, let's say you've got a load of leads that you're working on. You can just pop people into leads that quickly. And then forget about them. If that's all you've got time to do in this process is just to mark people as leads to come back to think, hang on, who am I coming back to? These four here. Rather than going to 2,000 people, here's my four people that I need to work on right now. Yeah. Um, and that's people, all you might have time people, for. Whatever, whatever the number is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I've got my four leads in there. And principally, I found that the biggest challenge I found to using a CRM is the time it took me to either mark those people as a lead or then do something with them. Mm -hmm. And doing something with them is the most important thing that I missed out on because I didn't have a process that I was driving people through. It was just all from memory. And I thought I could just put it all in here and just reel it out A, B, C, D. Turns out I couldn't. The seven steps are what I needed. And the um, hard bit I found as well is, like, you can forget who people are so it's like, who's that guy that I, he runs? He runs the electrical engineering company. And we were chatting the other day and you, you've you known so much about them. But the fundamental bit of who is he in amongst everybody else becomes really difficult. Whereas here, if you've got a defined group of leads, which are not 2000, <laughs> that you can work yeah. on, you can look through your leads and it might be 100 people and you can spot them easier. Yeah, because don't get me wrong, LinkedIn is a fantastic tool, as you said earlier, but it's designed to show you what it wants you to see. So if you spend a little bit of time canvassing on LinkedIn, before long, you are deluged by names and it's so easy to forget. What this does, is, what Goggle does here, is it lets you forget about all that and just prioritise these four here mm -hmm. or these, whatever the number is. These four are the ones that I'm interested in. I need to work on these. We might have had an early chat. It might be something else, but we're going to progress these through our stages. Um, so so what does those stages look like and how do you put those in? So that it's because how do you organize that? So the stages in Goggle are called workflows. So think of a workflow as a pipeline. You're going to start at A and you're going to move people down to B, C, D, E, F. Ultimately, you're going to look to get to a meeting at point G. Uh, so in Goggle, these are called workflows. Um, and what I, what you've got in a workflow here, this, my workflow here is called leads. Um, I have got stages of a workflow. And much like in those seven steps there, though, in Dean, um, I've got a connection stage, a curiosity stage, and a conversation, a conversation stage. Yeah. And I'm looking to move people from connection to curiosity to conversation. That's where I'm looking to get to. They all start at connection. I'm going to drive them through one, two, three. But to do that, I need to be slightly more granular. These are just stage names. These are just connect, be curious, yeah. Yeah, have like a conversation. Yeah, like high level, but you've got, you've yeah. got to comment, you've got to send a connection message, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. 
Absolutely, yeah. What I need to do is I need to put a process in place that I'm going to nudge people through. And they're, they're the tasks in a stage. Um, and the, my tasks that I create in Goggle CRM, I create them once. Um, and then everybody that I tag as a lead or opportunity can be popped through this, uh, this set of stages. And what I can do here is I, I've built these myself. So you'll see here that I've got a list of tasks. And they're really simple, like and comment on a LinkedIn post. And that's in the stage of connection. So before I connect to somebody, so it's not a cold connection, I'm going to like on, I'm going to like one of their posts. I'm going to comment on their posts. So there's a bit of name familiarity before I make that connection request. This is all preparation work in those seven steps. I'm going to like and comment on a post. I'm going to like and comment on a second post. And then once I've done that, there's hopefully a bit of name stickiness in there. Oh, it's Andy from Goggle CRM. It's Dean from Maverick. Then I'm going to send the connection request. And what I'm doing here is I'm building up what you can see. I'm building up a process here of guiding mm -hmm. people, guiding myself through targeting these people and moving all the way through to do what I need to do. If I do this, I can't forget part of the stage. I can't forget where I am. If I just dive into a connection request cold, John's going to look at that and go, don't know him. Forget mm -hmm. that. Let's not add him. If I've done these, I can push myself through. Then These are all in the connection stage, by the way, all these three. Mm -hmm. I'm doing these and then I'm resending a connection request. Yeah. Then once I've got that request, I'm going to send a message. Maybe not anything horrendous. I'm just going to ask what they struggle with. Maybe something like that. Something really lightweight. Uh, or I'm not it going to go... just be like a little thank you note and, you know, how's your day going kind of maybe a little bit more quirky than that. But it could just be something quite light as well, couldn't it? Yeah, these can be really light. I mean, the beauty of these is I can just make these whatever I like. So I can just say, send thanks message and hello. And I can save that task in here. And that just pops into there. So that can just be yeah. a really lightweight message that I'm going to send once they're connected and just say, hi, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. Then I might share something with them. These are all tasks that I've set up. Uh, these are basically going to guide me down that whole process. And then once I've had that initial two stages ticked off, connection and curiosity, and I've established there's something there, I might then ask them what they're struggling with. What are you struggling with day to day? Is there anything I can help with? For example, here's what I do. And ultimately, I'm guiding myself uh, through that journey of those steps with them really nicely without being jumping down their throat on step one. I'm not going to uh, connect here and then offer to sell here and then send them a quote here. I I'm really stepping through this as per those seven steps. Yeah. I usually and, use the exact same ones. And you can customise these depending on what process you do. So if you want to make them a bit longer, you can. If you want to make them a bit quicker. But the idea, Absolutely. we know that there's a certain number of interactions to actually get anywhere. So it's hard to make it shorter if you're selling something of you know high value considered purchase yeah absolutely there's a lot of flexibility i'm glossing over this now in my pre-prepared workflow that i use but actually let's say you have another stage that you want to go through before you actually connect it can be it's something you might do internally you might have something in the connection stage where you um check out their other socials yeah or... and that might be something that you do or whatever it may be check their company um... page to see if they're the right size you know yeah. Anything like that. And what you can do here is you can set a number of dates. You basically stagger these tasks so that as you move somebody into a stage, you're going to stagger these tasks. You might do this one five days after you've moved this contact into the stage of connection. And we'll see how that works in a minute. But ultimately, um, I've got um, I've got a set of tasks here that I'm, uh, I'm building yeah. up. That's and a workflow. So, so you can set days against the number of days against the workflow. So... Day one, you do this. Day five, you do this. Day seven, you do this. Day 10, you do this. So it's Absolutely. all automated and all organized. Yeah, because you, you want to make sure that your sequence is uh, is in the correct order. So it might be you want to check out the company page on day one after moving them into this particular stage. That one sat at the top. Yeah. Then you're going to like and comment on a second LinkedIn post. You might want to do that three days after um, you've moved them into connection. And what these are going to, these are going to generate tasks. So you only do this once and then you follow the same process over and over again. And we'll see in a minute, I'm going to, I'm going to drop one of my leads into this workflow here called lead. And we'll actually see what these, um, what these items pop out like. And we'll see how easy it is. Once mm -hmm. I've got somebody into this stage of connection, we'll see actually how that transpires and how that keeps me on sync with what I'm doing. Okay. So we're going to put a lead through this process. Yeah. So I've got my four leads here. I'm going to pick on Aaron. Um, Aaron is just sat there right now. He's doing nothing else. I've just moved him into the lead stage. Um, I've just moved into, I've marked him as a lead, sorry. Um, 
what I'm going to do here, I'm going to assign him to a workflow and I'm going to pop him into my lead workflow and I'm going to say that he's in the stage of connection. And straight away it says you're going to change the workflow of this contact and that might generate some tasks. Now that's what we're after because we've just created a series of tasks and we want to see those tasks in the background of Aaron. So that's all we've done. We've popped him into there and he's now in the workflow of connection down here. Yeah. But what you might not have seen is up the top here in the tasks tab, we've got four tasks that have been created for us. Perfect. All in Aaron's profile, we've got to check out his company page. We've got to check a PDF was received. We've got to like and comment on a second LinkedIn post. And then we're going to send a connection request. And that call Aaron and check out PDF, that's a pre current another action that you already had in it's not part yeah of i already had that in with aaron so i can mix and match these so i can set up the pre uh, the pre-built workflows in here just like we have done and we can pop somebody through these tasks but that doesn't stop me going back into aaron and adding tasks manually i can always go and add a new task in aaron that's really bespoke to something and that might be something i just need to do just ringing back tomorrow it might just be a quick yeah. call back yeah whatever it is so but you crucially, can have a template workflow but ultimately, you've still got the flexibility of going, oh, he said message, bring me back next week or I'd love to talk next week. So you could put a, an, a task in to call him back or whatever manually. Yeah, that's right. I've already got one here. If you remember, This one wasn't in my workflow, call Aaron and check PDF receive. But that's fine because I'm mixing and matching the tasks that I've got with Aaron and I'm popping another one in as well. It could just yeah. be call back and it might be I'm going to call him back tomorrow. And that might be it. And that will mix in with our tasks. So we've got our pre-tasks that we've already set in our workflow mixed in with other ad hoc tasks that we need to keep track of because there's always things you need to do day to day. Yeah. So crucially here, I can see my four tasks ordered in date order, newest at the top. Um, sorry, uh, uh, due first at the top to due last at the bottom. Here's the date and time they're due. And really simple over here is a green circle with a number in it. That tells me how many days that task is due in. This one is due in one day. This one's due in two days, three days, nine days. Really simple. I can forget all the dates and times. I just look at these numbers. This one's due tomorrow. And we'll see on the dashboard how that presents as well, because we can see on our dashboard this say, is really quick. One of the big challenges with a lot of CRMs is when you um, when you do all of this stuff is finding all of these tasks afterwards. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because you've got a lot of, let's say you've got, in, instead of me having four leads, you've got 50 leads in here, which is perfectly feasible. Having said that, You've got, let's say you've got three tasks in all those 50, that's 150 tasks. It's a nightmare trying to find them. What I've got on my dashboard here when I first come in is I've got tasks this week. This is a mix of all my tasks for everybody in my lead section. And you can see I've got three for Aaron, one for William, and they're all laid out. So this is what I need to do this week. These are things that I need to do in the next set of days. You'll see the green numbers back. One day, two day, three day, four days. If they're overdue, they're going to go bright red. So if I log in and this one's got a three on it and it's bright red, I'm overdue on this task. But crucially, I can see all my tasks at a flash. There's no faffing around. I'm not having to drill into each contact. Everything's laid out. Here's another little cool thing, though. I want to be even quicker than that, Dean. Sometimes I want to go into a lead. I'm going to pick out Zoe here. I just need to get something off my mind really quick. I need to follow up something with Zoe really quick tomorrow. This little icon with a clock here, I can click it just up here. And this just lets me follow up in three days' time. Call. That's all I'm going to put. I need to call Zoe in three days. That's done. it. Done. What I do here is I go back onto my dash uh, dashboard and straight on the left-hand side is my follow-ups. So I've got a separate list. These are quick ones, really quick. Get out of your mind. Yeah. Zoe, th uh, three days. I need to call her. So these aren't big tasks. I'm not having to go in and write anything out. I'm just going to somebody's profile and saying, hang on, I need to follow something up with Adrian. Follow up tomorrow. I don't even need a note. I can just go mm. out. Here it is. I'm following these people up. Tomorrow I come in, I click on Adrian, I can see the follow up and I can just cancel it when I've done it. Forget it. It's really quick. It's really, mm. really quick. So all I need to know when I log into this, Dean, I just need to know what am I doing today? What am I doing this week? Forget all the other fluff, following up and tasks. What am I doing? Yeah. So that's it. when you're looking at that and going, right, OK, I want to check out the company page. Or I want to. I want to like and comment on Aaron's post. You want to be able to get to LinkedIn quickly. I know you've got some new features coming, yeah. um, but at the moment, how do you get to LinkedIn as fast as possible to do that work? Really quick. So next to Aaron's name, if you can just see, is a small LinkedIn icon. I yeah. click that icon and straight away I get to Aaron's feed. 
So not just to his profile, I get to his feed directly, all his posts. So I can cut out all the chaff around the edges, here are Aaron's posts. There's his first post, there's his second post, it's filtered. I can get in there, I can like, I can comment, and I can do everything I need to do with that one single click. I'm not forced around. Mm. Um, I'm straight into the action. As soon as I've done that and I've left a comment and I've liked Aaron's post, I can close the tab and I can just tick the task. It's done. That's it. It's that quick. If I want to just uh, do something else with this particular contact, William, I'm in here, straight into his profile. Again, I can like, I can comment, I can repost it, whatever I need to do. As soon as I've done it, yeah, I've liked it, close. And tick. likewise, you could go to his profile, you could message him on his profile, you could do anything like that. Absolutely. Yeah, it's the normal LinkedIn window. It just bypasses all the fluff around the edge, all the algorithm, all the feed that you don't need to see because it will just draw you into other things. It just allows you to stay focused. I need to do yeah. this right now with Aaron. Done. Close. Now, I Tick. know I know you've you've not cra you've not launched this yet, but there's another feature that's in the works at the moment. There is. Yeah, there's a there's a LinkedIn feature that's uh, that's sat proudly in the wings on this tab here, um, just on the top right corner, it says LinkedIn coming soon. And what this is, is this is an integration with LinkedIn that rather than have to go to LinkedIn to take those actions of to like and comment on a post, within the LinkedIn tab, if I clicked into that now, I would see a list of Aaron's posts, like for like, that I can uh, react to, I can like, I can comment on in the Goggle CRM. I don't leave it. I'm staying in the CRM. Likewise, I've got a message history with Aaron in Goggle CRM. So literally, I come into my dashboard, here's my task, I can go into the profile, I can go into the LinkedIn tab, and I can do my work in this tab. I don't need to leave Goggle CRM. And that makes me really efficient. And that allows some future proofing as well in terms of being able to make sure tasks are done and just keeping your head in one place, really. Uh, but for now, um, it's dead easy just to be able to click straight through um, and make those comments, make those interactions, then come back and tick them off. And so, from my point of view, looking at stuff like this, um, I'll, I'll say the other thing as well in a minute, but getting your getting a system where you can keep tabs on your work and what you need to do in a in a a rhythm so that one, it becomes a habit for you, because let's face it, if you don't have habits that all your social selling will fall fall by the wayside. Yep. If you don't have a process of not relying on memory. You log in here, it sees everything that you need to do, but you need that discipline of a process and a system that you stick to like glue so that you can go, actually, I've followed this process with 50 prospects. I've got this many out. How do we improve that process? And and so many people are sh like shooting from the hip when it comes to social selling and then wondering why the results are hit and miss because they don't, you know, if I follow a similar process, I might tweak the messages and stuff, but then I can look and go, actually, with Aaron, I won a deal. I won one with Bill and with Leslie and Zoe. I look at the wins and then I can go, what did I do differently with them versus the ones I didn't do and improve your whole process? But if you're shooting from the hip, that's impossible. Yeah, absolutely. And I think people sometimes worry that a process needs to be enormous. This on the screen is your process. That is it. You yeah. built this once and you can forget that then. You don't you don't have to come back. If 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 your process works beautifully, Dean, and you think, do you know what, I'm getting good results, you might not come back into this page for six months because the process is just running. You know it works. And if I pop back in now to Aaron, let's say we've gone through the connection um stage, pop it into curiosity. Again, it might generate some more tasks. And I've got a couple more tasks now. I've got to share a social document. I've got to send a thank you message and a hello. These things have popped in. All I'm doing here is literally stepping through these different stages of a workflow. I'm just making sure that I'm stepping through from connection to curiosity. Everything else in the background is popping in for me. It's just saying, it's a little prod just to say, right, here's what you're doing next. You're checking out that. You're sharing a document. You're going to send a thanks message. That's it. These are all just items that you've set up once. This is the process. The system will do the rest. All you have to do is just move the person through the stages and the system will do the rest. Everything pops into here for you. It's just where you need it. It's absolutely bomb proof once you've built your process and once you know that process works. If it doesn't work, you just come in here, you just tweak it. Tweak the process. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Once you've got it right, it's in. Now, another thing on this note, 
like you might have a client, you might do a piece of work for a project or for a client. So I know that somebody's gone from actually they've done won an opportunity, they're an active client. You might want to build up a process to keep them warm so that they don't drift off and they come back again. You can actually build a social a link, a social selling process or a workflow in here to engage clients, right? Absolutely. So my work, you can build as many of these workflows as you like. And what you do is you just tell Goggles CRM what type of workflow it is. So I might have a dead simple client workflow. And I build that client workflow here with a couple of stages. Let's just say I call them stage A and stage B. And I do exactly the same. This is how quick it is to build my stages. And I pop a task into a stage um, in stage A. Check all is OK with new system. And I do that. And I might want to um, so, say I want to do it in 90 just days. Just whilst you're doing that. So you could build out like a whole retention strategy of existing customers and clients whereby you go, right, three months after they've purchased, say, or for the next three months, this is the workflow we're going to do to keep them engaged. So it could be like I'll send a check in email. I'll engage with them on LinkedIn. I'll ask them how things are. So in other words, you're not just, I've got your deal, I've done it, you've paid your invoice, it's done. I hope you come back. You could actually build up like three or four steps to go, how do I keep them engaged and interacted so that they come back in the future? And you could, Absolutely. I mean, in theory, you could build out a keep a, a warm, warm, a customer warming process whereby it drops a task in every 30 days to, to do something. Yeah, absolutely. You can build them out. It's not just a case of once they become an opportunity, then a client, they're forgotten. If if you're really smart with your processes, I can send a check-in email and I can set that due every 30 days. As soon as I pop somebody, if I, if I pick a, another, let's say I pick one of my leads, let's pick um, Abby. I mark Abby as a client now. I can now move Abby down into my client workflow here, stage A and stage B. And that will now start generating those tasks against Abby. And here's my things to do in a month's time. Yeah. Here's my one to do next year. Um, I can be as future thinking as I like to make sure that nobody gets left out of the process. The process doesn't have to just be now. It can be a process for clients yeah. in the future. Absolutely. You can be, you can be as smart as you need to be. But if it, and when you use this to its uh, to its um, to its use case. You can really look after people in terms of bringing them through those seven steps, really nurturing them, making sure you've done everything you need to do. And then you can take them through the process of being an opportunity and then keep them as a client as well and still engage with them. The system allows you to do the whole lot. And really, I mean, it comes from. How do I not let people fall through the cracks? That's the first part. But then it's like, how do I optimize my process so I get more repeat business, more success? And it's like, you know, I've used CRMs and you, they're too complicated for their own good. Like if you're a full time salesperson and die hard on it all the time, I can understand why you want this prompt and this, 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 all this stuff. But fundamentally, you just got to what do I need to do today? Who do I need to do it? What am I doing and who do I do it to? <laughs> That's it. And, you know, you, you can advance this slightly. Let's now say with this particular contact, I'm going to mark them as opportunity. Uh, they're no longer a lead. I can create an actual monetary opportunity. Let's say it's a selling package that I'm going to sell to them. The value is four nine five, and it's active. We've we've gone through the process. We've actually made something out of this. We've yeah. had a great relationship built up with Abby. We've gone through. There's an opportunity here. It's four nine five. If I go back to my dashboard, the third column here, contacts into leads into opportunities. I can actually see how much revenue I've generated. It's sat there as an opportunity. And again, I can just click in and see who it is. It's an Abbey. Um, I can do all sorts of other things around the edges, but ultimately what I'm doing is I'm making sure that nobody's dropping through the bits of the process and mm -hmm. I'm moving people down. You know, I can yeah. I can use tags. I can use everything else. I can be really creative as much as I like. I can say that Aaron's a high value lead, which filters him at the top here, and I can then filter by my high value leads, everything like this. But ultimately, all this is facilitating a very simple process. And, and all things, you need to do. I was going to say things like when you do quote somebody or put a proposal in, you might choose to engage with them on LinkedIn because sometimes they go like ghost you for a while because companies are like working on stuff that you can engage with them to 
not just to go, how's my proposal? Are we going to do it? But actually engage with them to keep the contact, even on a social level, whilst they're doing their other stuff of putting it through budgets and God knows whatever else they need to do. You can engage with the prospect and remind yourself to keep it do happening. So you're not just going, just checking in, just checking in, just checking in. You're actually building up a relationship through LinkedIn whilst this proposals being reviewed and blah 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 yeah absolutely it, it's, it's not just it's not just a piece of um archaic tick box work you know you would have a new workflow in here for opportunities and you'd make sure there are some meaningful steps in there so that you can make sure that when you do move somebody to the stage of an opportunity um the the tasks that you're generating out of the back of that are actually meaningful tasks uh you know some people might take 60 days to get an approval for a project that you're trying to sell to them you're not just going to fill that with hi how are you doing hi how are things moving on you're going to fill that with tasks to make sure that you're still doing what you need to do, engage with them on LinkedIn so that you're still front of mind. So that if they are going a little bit cold for one reason or another, you can just uh, preempt that and you can stop that happening. The system will allow you to do whatever you need to do to achieve that process of contact to lead to opportunity. But it's simple. <laughs> it's simple. Yeah, I, I must admit, Dean, I've, I've been in this game for a long, long time building big CRMs. I've seen every single CRM system there is out there on the market. And I would consider myself quite technically capable. And the bit that I struggle with is I just need to get down to business quickly. I, I don't have the time to go through lots and lots of layers of setting up somebody's profile. Um, I can make a new contact here with just that basic information. First name, last name. The rest of it is optional. That might be all I need. Once I've got that, I can start working on them. Um, and that's that's what drew me to build something that I thought, hang on, if I'm struggling with this, Others are going to be struggling as well. They just need to go down those seven steps. And this is the facilitator, if you if you will, of that process. Awesome. So we're coming up for 50 odd minutes. So um, I'm just going to share my screen again, if that's all right, Andrew, just yeah, so I can give people a recap on the process. Um, so we've talked quite a bit about, about the process you need to follow, that trying to get the fastest path to the sale can often sabotage the output and the success you get. That's why you need a stepped approach, stages. And you'll notice, I figured this out in Canva, Andrew, that the connection stage is blue because it's cold and you have to warm the prospect up through a series of steps until they get warmer. But you can't, do that. Like it. you can't do that with a connection and then a try and start a conversation. It's too much, too fast. It's and you will lose more than you gain in that process. You might win one every blue moon, but you could have won three, four, five uh, at the expense. So sometimes speed isn't or, or fast isn't always the most successful. And like we've shown with the CRM, it doesn't have to take weeks, hours, months or years. It's just got to be a process. And then I just wanted to just remind you of this um, uh, when I can get my mouse to work. Uh, you know, you need that entire process. It starts with the tracking. You don't know where you're up to with people that you've got chaos. Everything from the tracking brings order to a process, which gives you the most success. I know it's not a sexy thing to say, like you need order and organization. Everybody wants to get to the conversation and do the deal. Well, you can get the best rush from doing more deals by being ordered and, and systematic in your approach. And um, I recommend Goggle. I think it's the simplest way. Yes, you can use a spreadsheet. Yes, you can use something a bit more com complicated and clever. But if you just want to work the process, Goggle's easy and it's pretty cheap. I mean, Andrew, what is it? Like five pound a user for 10 users? Something like that, is it 50 quid a month? Yeah, it's 50 quid a month. It's flat fee. So actually, as you're growing a team, as the team grows out, you don't need to worry about um, scaling the cost. Um, and, and there's no there's no limits. There's no tiering inside Goggle CRM. So every, once you, when you sign up for a seven-day demo, free of charge, without any payment details, everything is open. Um, anything you put in there will persist all the way through. If you pay then, um, everything stays. Everything's unlimited. You don't get any hidden tactics of this number of contacts, leads, opportunities. It's 50 pounds a month fixed fee if the team grows to another seven people and you're doing well it's still yours absolutely everything it's, it's designed to actually help you not to try and penalize you for doing well so so i'm going to say one thing though andrew you might not like this 
Um, if you're not serious about building something that's systematic and predictable, getting a CRM is pointless. Yeah, it's pointless. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it, it, it is. You have to be um, willing to put the groundwork in and go through it. The system will do exactly as you want it to do. But, and the groundwork is as minimal in terms of those workflows as it needs to be. You just build it once and then forget it. But you've got to be in the mindset that you're going to work this process. If yeah. you're in that mindset, then the CRM will be an absolute breeze for you and it will be a dream. Real. Right. So you can go and if you Google, if you Google Goggle CRM, <laughs> Google Goggle, G-O-G-G-L-E CRM, you can go and get a free trial, have a go with it. See how it works. Message Andrew if you want to, you know, you want some help uh, figuring out how it works. But either way, you need a system to take people from I don't know you to I'm hoping, hoping to have a conversation. And that's not one step. That's not two steps. That's probably seven steps, seven different steps of activity that you're probably going to push people through. So, Andrew, thank you so much for joining me on your first ever LinkedIn Live. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. And if you want to go and get the trial, go get the trial. If you've got questions about the seven steps and social selling, message me. If you want to see how you systemize it, drop Andrew a message. And I'm sure he'll be happy to show you how uh, Goggle can help you do it. But from us, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, over and out. Uh, we are signing off. So have a great evening and we'll see you all soon. Thank you. Good evening. Oh, 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 oh,